her she was beat mm. they saw her body she didn't just die in a tub like she was beat Jaguar Wright reveals how Diddy and Clive k one l Whitney Houston. Y'all, I swear Jaguar Wright has her four on Diddy's neck and she is not letting go anytime soon because she is determined to see the end of Diddy. This time, she is bringing some strong evidence to show that Diddy and Clive Davis allegedly teamed up to unalive Whitney Houston. She is on a mission to prove that Whitney's death was not an accident and she is now pushing for the police to reopen the investigation. Chili, this is some crazy business and Jaguar is not here to play. I swear, Jaguar is putting her back into exposing every last detail about Diddy and Chili. At this point, she probably has enough tea and dirt on Diddy to write an entire book. And the crazy part of it is that Diddy, as well as other people in the entertainment industry, have spent years trying to sabotage Jaguar and make it seem like she's making things up for clout because she's jealous of them. They've called her jealous, mean-spirited, blah blah blah, but nobody has ever filed a lawsuit against her or taken other legal steps against her. I mean, sure, there were threats of lawsuits, but nobody ever went through with them, and that was the first sign that Jaguar was onto something that the rest of us didn't know about. But then, it all blew up in their faces because everything Jaguar said started coming true, especially for Diddy. Last year, Jaguar spoke about how weird it was that everybody at Uptown Records had either passed away or almost passed away except Diddy. Uptown Records started with five people. Andre Harrell, I'll be sure, Heavy D and Puffy. And Kim was the longest working employee because she was there from the very beginning. She was Andre's personal assistant. Mm. Kim is dead. Heavy D is dead. Yeah. Andre Harrell is dead. The only two left are Puffy and Al. And Al almost died. Isn't that interesting? She also pointed out how weird it was that they all passed away under some very suspicious circumstances. Heavy D was found dead face down in the heart attack. Andre Harrell, heart attack. Kim died from pneumonia, but there's the first coroner's report that said that she died. It, it was ruled a homicide, and they found toxins in her body to prove that she had been poisoned. You know, they, they have poisons that create heart attack and pneumonia-like symptoms. She then talked about how interesting it was that they were all in the process of exposing Diddy when they suddenly passed. You want to know what they all had in common, though? The survivors and the, and, and the late of Uptown Records, they were all writing tell-all books. Mm -hmm. Andre was writing a book right before he died. Heavy D was working on a book before he died. Kim Porter was working on a book before she died. And I'll be sure was working on the documentary of his life. And then he goes into a coma. She also revealed that Diddy and Pastor T.D. Jakes were involved in some weird kind of gay relationship. Why do you think T.D. Jakes was at Puff Daddy's birthday party? If Bishop Jakes was at a Diddy party, there could only be two reasons. Money or sex. That's all that happens at Diddy parties. Money and sex. She also made comments about how Did was a mean guy who often put hands on other people, especially women, including the women he had dated. She talked about how he would hurt his girlfriends and baby mamas, how he put his hands on them and left them with bruises and scars on their bodies. Of course, Diddy claimed that she was making things up because he had a booming career and she didn't blah blah blah, and at the time people kind of believed him because the allegations that she made were just too wild and crazy to think that they could even be true. I mean, Diddy literally refers to himself as brother love and does all that stuff about spreading love and positivity. Well, Cassie's lawsuit quickly changed everything and we started seeing the dark side of Diddy that he had managed to hide for about 30 years. The things she revealed in the lawsuit were plain horrifying and Diddy's public image has taken a big hit since then. She revealed some truly horrifying stuff, like the part where she said that Diddy essayed Ms. Ventura in her own home after she tried to leave him, often punched, beat, kicked, and stomped on Ms. Ventura, resulting in 
bruises, burst lips, black eyes, and bleeding forced Ms. Ventura to engage in intimate acts with male SWs while getting off on it and filming the encounters, demanded that Ms. Ventura to carry his firearm in her purse just to make her uncomfortable and demonstrate how dangerous he is, and introduce Ms. Ventura to a lifestyle of excessive alcohol and substance abuse, and required her to procure illicit prescriptions to satisfy his own addictions. The lawsuit also confirmed a lot of things that Jaguar has been telling us about Diddy and the things he has been doing in secret and girl, we owe Jaguar a big apology because she was telling the truth all along and it's now clear that the reason Didi went above and beyond to prove her wrong is that she was telling the truth and he didn't want her exposing his secrets and y'all can trust Jaguar to come with more tea to spill on Diddy and like I said she is keeping her foot on his neck and this time she is exposing him for allegedly taking out Whitney Houston. Well he didn't do it alone because he allegedly did it alongside Clive Davis. But before we get into the whole thing about how Diddy allegedly helped Clive get away with murder, can we take a moment to talk about why he would even do that in the first place? Well, according to some people, this would be because Clive gave Diddy his first big break in Hollywood. Diddy has always acknowledged Clive, and in 2019, after he won the Grammy Icon Award, he said, Clive Davis and Arista Records gave me a chance when I was starting Bad Boy Records. He was one of the first industry executives to really believe in me. I'm forever grateful for him, but it's a long jump from being grateful to him for giving him a start to helping him cover up a murder. So what else was going on that we didn't know about? Well, according to some reports, this is because Diddy was Clive's boy toy. There are reports that Clive allegedly SA'd both Diddy and Diddy's first mentor, Andre Harrell, and that's the reason that he helped Diddy start his record label, Bad Boy Records. And if you think about it, Clive backing Diddy to start Bad Boy Records didn't make a whole lot of sense at the time. To start with, Diddy didn't really have a lot of experience in the industry at the time because he had only been an intern for Andre Harrell for three years, so it's crazy that he went straight from being an intern to owning his label. There's also the fact that Diddy had gotten fired by Andre a couple of months before starting the label. He had organized a music fest that went sideways and led to the deaths of nine people. It was a PR nightmare, and it was weird that Clive would need to sink money into Diddy so quickly after that disaster. Plus, there's also the fact that he fired Andre and funded Diddy himself. Even weirder is the fact that Clive himself has revealed that he had no interest or hope in Bad Boy Records, and the only reason he invested in it was because of Diddy. He said, Sean Combs convinced me that that Top 40 was going to embrace hip-hop. It seemed so unlikely then when he played me Craig Mack's 1994 hit, Flava in Ya Ear, and notorious B.I.G. material when he was totally unknown. This 21, 22-year-old guy was seeing clearly how music was changing. Yeah, this didn't make all that much sense, but according to Jaguar, it's because Clive allegedly used to S.A. Andre, who in turn allegedly groomed Diddy. My focus right now is Sean Kong. Okay, tell us why. Tell us why. Because he's a trafficker. Okay. And he's using music and entertainment to sex. Now, is this, is this just boys, girls, adults, kids? Like it I mean, from what I've heard from sources that I would consider reliable, it really doesn't matter. Wow. Um, I don't think sexuality is something that has anything to do with gender at this point. For Sean, I, I honestly think he's just an extreme narcissist who loves power. He loves the ability to manipulate and control people. Why? Most likely because he was victimized by his mentor who loved to control people. And his mentor was Andre Harrell. Tell, tell us how he was, was mentored by Clyde Davis. And when it comes to why Clive decided to fund Bad Boy Records, Jaguar revealed something interesting. Oh, oh God. It don't tell me that Andre Harrell got touched by Clive Davis, too. I'm telling you, I don't know what happened between Andre and, and, and Clive. What I do know is that Andre got passed over. Like, wow. how do you go from being the president of Uptown and losing your entire company? to your intern. Like Puff started out as an intern. 
So according to what the streets are saying, Diddy, Andre, and Clive used to be a three-way item and engage in threesomes. But then Diddy allegedly went behind Andre's back to cut him out and he became Clive's number one boy toy. This explains why Clive put money into Diddy at a time when the industry was giving him the side eye because, you know, nine people died. Okay, so now to the topic of Whitney Houston and how Diddy allegedly helped Clive get away with her murder. So y'all probably know that Whitney was Clive's artist. Clive was something of a mentor to her because he signed her and helped her grow her career over the years. But then there were rumors that things were starting to sour between them and that they were about to have a falling out because Whitney was trying to get free from his control because he allegedly held her under a strict control. But the rumors are saying that Clive was not about to let her go so easily because she was making him a lot of money. I mean, she was the Whitney Houston who remains one of the greatest singers of all time. And she was very profitable. So rumor has it that Clive was determined to have her all to himself. And if he couldn't have her, then nobody could. So he allegedly plotted to have her taken out. The interesting thing about this is that in the days leading up to her death, there were reports of her acting erratic after she met with Clive. According to reports, she had gone to visit Clive while he was preparing for his annual pre-Grammys party. And even though we don't know what happened between those two after she left Clive, media reported that she appeared disheveled and disoriented, with what looked like sweat running down her face and blood dripping down her leg. Two days after this, she was found unconscious in the bathtub and she passed away. The crazy part about this is that Clive refused to cancel his party, and this got him the side-eye from everyone. The most he did was give a speech at the party saying, By now you have all learned of the unspeakably tragic news of our beloved Whitney's passing. I don't have to mask my emotions in front of a room full of so many dear friends. I am personally devastated by the loss of someone who has meant so much to me for so many years. Whitney was so full of life. Whitney was a beautiful person and a talent beyond compare. Well, he certainly wasn't devastated enough to cancel the party, but okay. Even worse, the party was held in the same hotel where Whitney died and her body hadn't been moved yet. Say what you want, but there's something super creepy about having a glamorous party when your friend's body is lying in a hotel room above you. Even reporters at CBS News found this weird and they wrote, Houston's body remained in the hotel room hours after emergency responders pronounced her dead. Downstairs, Davis's extravagant party went on as planned as investigators roamed the hotel lobby and women wearing designer ball gowns and men dressed in tuxedos shuffled by towards the red carpet. Then there's this super disturbing report from a private investigator that revealed that Whitney had some defense wounds on her body. Jaguar Wright has also backed this up, insisting that Whitney didn't die in a bathtub like we were told. Her, she was beat. They saw her body. She didn't just die in a tub like she was beat. So how does Diddy tie into this? Well, y'all know how he was Clive's boy toy, and if Clive told him to cover a murder, y'all best believe that he's going to keep his mouth shut. There's also the fact that he was hospitalized with a migraine after the party, and his team claimed that it was because he had partied too hard. Uh, is this the same Diddy who has been throwing insane parties since the 90s? Yeah, the math ain't mathing, but according to an insider, he was allegedly trying to create an alibi. The insider revealed that Diddy was allegedly allegedly trying to prove that he was too sick to have physically fought Whitney and put his hands on her like the report stated. He was allegedly trying to cover his tracks in case a police investigation was launched, and that's just crazy. Now, I'm not saying that Diddy unalived Whitney himself, because what the rumors are saying is that he tried to get an alibi just in case, s y'all come to your own conclusions. Fans left shocking comments saying, Clive had Brandy and Monica sing the tribute song It All Belongs to Me for Whitney Houston. You can see in the video and in the lyrics that Clive was finished with Whitney. Whitney. He said, it all belongs to me, which is why he took her daughter out too. Yes, I said Clive Davis needs to be charged with Whitney Houston's murder, and Clive Davis needs to be investigated as well. Sean should be incarcerated, now. But do you guys believe these allegations, or do you think that Jaguar is now making things up? Drop your thoughts in the comments below, then check out this next video.